you know she's the bomb <laughs> machine she's the bomb machine what, what was the, the the reason for you to leave a place where you were feeling great a club that performed really well last season and now they're lacking the performance in the in champions league ball across to dylan now he double in flight oh what a start yeah. into the net she does it again yes I'm going to on the champions of europe Back at it uh, in a week without handball action for us, but with a lot to talk about. This been We Talk Handball. We are back and we, it's the three of us, myself, Ben Kunko, joined by Barcelona legend, by one of Spain's best ever to, to get the ball into the hand, Victor Thomas, and by beach handball goat in Denmark, Martin Wilstrup. <laughs> hello, guys. Hello, 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 guys. Hello, hello, guys. How are you doing? <laughs> so far, so good. How about yourself, Victor? You are getting these introductions better and better every week, huh? <laughs> I'm working on it. I'm working on it. I, you you well, gotta keep trying. In the in the episode number twenty five, I'm not sure what's gonna be. You know, <laughs> uh, you're probably gonna be a god, so you're probably okay. just gonna be <laughs> Zeus' son or something like that. Uh, but uh, what about Martin? What about Martin? Well, I mean, Martin <laughs> did have an upgrade already as well. Uh, he went from uh, well, whatever, to the beach handball goat in Denmark. Uh, are you happy with that, Martin? As long as it's going in that direction, I'm actually happy about it. Uh, I don't know if it could get any worse than it did in the beginning, but as long as it's getting better and better, then I'm I'm super satisfied. But as I said earlier, I don't know if we recorded that one. It's always hard to come up with after you introduce Victor. So in the in the future, I would like you to introduce me first and then Victor <laughs> after. <laughs> you know, guys, it's always easy to to come in and comment on on my introductions, but I never heard any one of you introducing me yet. Oh, you forgot it yourself, the first episode, actually. <laughs> yeah, well, fair <laughs> enough. But we're in the fourth episode already, so uh, we are looking forward yeah. to our, our first anniversary, uh, something <laughs> like that. Um, but uh, since we had a lot of talking last week uh, without a guest and uh, with a little bit of analysis, uh, we do have a guest in here today once more and once again. Um, and I'm very much looking forward to her uh, because uh, she is one of the... One of the shining stars and one of the shining teams in the moment. We spoke about her quite a lot in the first uh, three episodes. Uh, I think uh, we spoke about ICAS because they are shining in this Champions League. And if we speak about ICAS, we have to speak about their new star signing, I would say, which is uh, uh, the one and only bomb machine. Marketa Yerapkova. <laughs> that's it, that's it, Marketa Yerapkova. Uh, she will join us in uh, a second for the call. Um, Martin, are you starstruck already? <laughs> I actually got the chance to meet uh, Yerapkova at the uh, EHF Final Four um, where where they won it. But it's going to be interesting to see uh, or to hear about her you know, transfer to the Danish League, going from the three times winners, uh, Vipers, to the Danish League. Her thoughts about that. And as Victor said, they're shining at the moment. And uh, it's, I don't recall that any one of us had ECAST uh, at the EHF Final Four. Uh, that's the funny thing about predictions and also the hard, tough times. But uh, let's hear what uh, Maketa will say about that and uh, what the goals are for ECAST. Uh, also, because they um, they didn't play Champions League last year, but they put themselves in a great position at the moment. Yeah, well, I mean, they uh, are keeping the winning streak uh, on running. They uh, just last week beat Krim with a stunning 33-32. to 32. Did you guys watch the match? Yes, I did. Uh, I watched the, the match afterwards, uh, and it was a crazy match. I think uh, Krim, uh, that if I don't recall wrong, it's also a team that none of us has put in, uh, in the final <laughs> four. Uh, it's doing it's doing a great job and and going to uh, to Denmark uh, and 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 playing like this and almost winning the game against Ikas, which is playing with a lot of confidence. It was uh, it was a nice game to watch. Yeah, yeah. I also watched some of it, and uh, if I recall it correctly, Krim was actually leading the 
I would say around, I was about to say 99% of the time they were also leading at half time but in the end the uh, Ica scored the last goal and they won by one um yeah a buzzer beater but um I I predicted the episode before that Ikas would win, but uh, I didn't, you know, expect it actually to. I wouldn't say Krim was in control because they ended up losing, but they had the upper hand throughout the game. Is was if I recall it correctly. Well, most definitely they did. Um, but in the end, uh, it took one special lady to turn the tie around completely. Um, and she did finish up with a buzzer beater. Uh, it was the 33-32 uh, in the, not the very last second, but I think it was like uh, seven or eight seconds left on the clock. Uh, so yeah, that will be super interesting to, to hear uh, what kind of emotions run through your body. Victor, did you ever get the chance to score such a late goal? No, I never scored a, a buzzer beater. Actually, once I did, the the goal was uh, cancelled. You know, because the, <laughs> the 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 official the official of the EHF said the game was uh, was over. That was mm. in uh, in Germany in Mannheim against Rene Kaloven. Uh, I I shot from uh, from the defense because they were playing with that goalkeeper uh, during the mm. flight of the ball. Uh, the time the time stopped so the time was finished so yeah so I never think, did it I think we need a guest with a little bit better timing than Victor Tomaset and uh, we are having her right in right now ladies and gentlemen okay. let's give her a warm welcome nice to have you here Marketa Yorapkova nice to see you hi my introduction bank was uh, much excited exci you know it was more more exciting on it you know she's the bomb machine she's the bomb machine <laughs> yeah, that's the way that uh, Victor talked about you. Are you happy with that, uh, being called the bomb machine uh, right now? I mean, it's uh, going good for you. Mm, I had uh, so many nicknames also from last uh, Final Four. It was something like uh, Marqueta Raqueta or something like this. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, some people are calling like this, but... It is how it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, but I mean, uh, most of the nicknames, uh, at least uh, all of them that are connected with you, they are having a positive vibe with it. And uh, that's some good thing to have. Um, because it's going quite well for you guys at the moment. How does it feel to be sitting in the sweet spot of uh, Group B? How does the table look like for, uh, from your perspective? It's nice. <laughs> I was like... Uh no expectation before the season because uh, the teammates after a long time to playing Champions League again it was uh, in some years ago so uh, no one knows what to expect but we were like we are going uh, from game by game and we want to win all the time so we are fighting for two points in every games and until now it's fun and it's nice what's your secret because, I mean, uh, European League winner Zcast, I don't know whether you guys expected to hit the ground running that hard, uh, but, uh, well, <laughs> uh, the the start couldn't be any better. Um, so, uh, what's the Zcast secret for the season? I don't know if it's a good idea to say secret <laughs> in, the, in October, <laughs> but, I mean, uh, uh, I don't think that it's uh, any secret. We are just working... Uh, like the team and uh, everyone it's really important uh, part of all of the team and uh, i really like how club is behave and how club is working and uh, not only the girls uh, in the team because of course is the most important when it's not working uh, in the dressing room then uh, cannot be any success i think so uh, yes i think that we are like one team uh, in the field and also behind but Martin, you did have a, uh, a very interesting, uh, a very interesting scene that you <laughs> found with Marketa. Yeah, it is like this, um, Marketa. You know, in in Denmark in TV two, there are some clips before the the games are shown, and uh, Simone Pedersen was asked who was going to to win the. Don't league. speak about <laughs> that. Don't speak about that. <laughs> <laughs> And I was just kind of wondering yeah. if you wanted to cho choose, uh, you know, change your answer if you had the opportunity. <laughs> of course I will change, but it was not mine thinking. And she said to me like two times, 
what I am thinking. And I was like, okay, what you are thinking. So <laughs> it was stupid and <laughs> I don't feel, and I didn't feel so good, but uh, it happened. <laughs> so uh, That's a funny yeah, story. Just, That's a funny of story. course, it's so different. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, just wanted to shake it up here a little bit also because I saw on Wednesday you won against also Ulms away in the in the Danish league and you also won against Mets and as you said it's going really well but I also want to hear how was it to play against Vipers actually in the first game also? <laughs> yeah, I said uh, many times that uh, I was so happy that we have them in the group and I can go back to Kristiansand because uh, I really like uh, the place and the country and of course, the club. So uh, I was happy for that, but uh, I didn't expect that it will be so early <laughs> in the season. <laughs> so uh, it was, I didn't want to say that it was some special because all of the games in the Champions League and also in the league was uh, in kind of special. But of course, uh, it was a little bit different feeling for me before the game. I said like, I want to have uh, five minutes over the game, then uh, I will don't think and it will be fine. So, uh, yeah, it was uh, it was nice. And in the end, of course, uh, it was a lucky and happy game uh, for us. But uh, Marketa, uh, um, as you said, uh, you, you really like the place, you, you, you like the club, the, the people there. And you were having a lot of success in, in Vipers because you were having a key role in the team and you won uh, two Champions League in a row. Well, it was three, but with you in the team, it was two times. Uh, what made you go to ICAST? Well, uh, what, what was the, the, the reason for you to leave a place where you were feeling great to, to go to a new it's new nice project? questions to It's nice questions to say like this because uh, I had many questions uh, in the past like uh, why you are going to the worst team and uh, why you are doing this step and this step and I said just stop it's my uh, it's my career and it's my life and I can do decision what I want I had like one meeting uh, in the beginning of the season and uh, it was like okay this is the offer this uh, what we can and for me it was like just open eyes for a new options because, uh, yeah, I like the club. I really like the club. You did arrive as the only non-Scandinavian in uh, at ICAST. Uh, <laughs> how does it feel? Yeah. Uh, after that uh, moment that I uh, started to knew a little bit uh, Norway, I was like, uh, yes, this is kind of uh, mentality what I really like. And... When I uh, know more people from uh, Denmark or from Sweden, for me, it's quite similar. I know that they will say that it's not uh, the same or the similar, but for me, it's quite a similar. So I really like it, this mentality. And for me, it was priority to stay uh, in Scandinavia. So uh, yeah, when I go a little bit back, when I see the interest of Herning and how they want to build the club and how they want to go in the future, like in front, for me was a really nice project. How would you describe the Northern European mentality? <laughs> <laughs> Scandinavian mentality or? Yeah, yeah well, uh, Northern yeah. European, that's what I meant with the Scandinavian. I like, uh, I like this cold. type of people. <laughs> okay, it's cold, <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, bad weather. <laughs> in this stuff. Martin, but, are you listening? Uh, <laughs> I am listening. But still, it's hard to disagree. <laughs> but uh, still, I like more these people that uh, they are living their own life and they don't care what uh, the other are doing. So this is like really the best here that uh, they are not speaking. If uh, I don't want to do this from some reason, I will not do it because it's my decision. And uh, in the other country, it's a little bit thinking uh, behind and uh, why she's not doing this and uh, she's not doing this. So, uh, yeah, this is like more freedom, I feel. Did you get a uh, warm welcome uh, in your new club? Uh, yes, it was nice. It was, of course, hard because uh, it's okay. It's really similar, but it's still a new country. <laughs> and... Uh, 
I knew just uh, Andrea goalkeeper because we play one year uh, together in Vipers. So I knew just her, but it was uh, really good because she helped me uh, in the beginning. And it's always nice to know some person in the club. Uh, so uh, it was really nice. But uh, how I said, the people in the club uh, are really nice and they help uh, me a lot from the beginning. Uh, from my perspective also, I actually agree with the bad weather in Denmark. It's hard to disagree, uh, but it's even colder in, in Norway, I would say. Uh, but sometimes there's always time for a new chapter and you actually won everything that you could win with Wipers and you did really well. One of the reasons why you changed to Denmark uh, without being rude towards the Norwegian league, but it seems like it would be a disappointment if Wipers don't win the league. But in Denmark, I would say the league are more harder or equal you know you have Eshbear, you had Odense, and you have yourself also so and you also went to Copenhagen sometimes there are diff uh, difficult away games was that maybe also one of the reasons why you, yeah one thing is you wanted to try something new because you want everything that you could with Vipers but also maybe a harder <laughs> league uh, yes I think so because I am this type of person that uh when it's something in front of me and uh, in my eyes it's like uh, nice and I can take something more not only in my career but also in my personal life I will just take it that I like to go uh, to do some things that make me a little bit better and higher maybe that I can step up and uh, not only how I said uh, in the career but also in uh, in my life so it was the reason because my feeling is like the Denmark Danish league, it's uh, one of the top in the Europe. Of course, uh, there is uh, many, many other, but I think that uh, Denmark league, uh, Danish league already showed last year when, uh, of course, Esberg and Odense, Esberg was in uh, final four and uh, two Danish teams played the uh, final of European league. So I think it means a lot. And yeah. how, how, how was for you to to come to a new team uh, in your position and to adapt to a new system. Uh, it looks like uh, you had a very fast uh, uh, procedure, you know, because you scored 21 goals in Champions League in in four games and it's actually going quite well. But how 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 it was to, to change the system and to adapt to a new team in your position? It was uh, in this... Uh like view it was quite hard because i felt after two weeks that i never played handball and uh, i don't know how to do <laughs> how to do it so many stuff <laughs> so i was speaking uh, with the coach also about that and uh, he just said that uh, i need to be calm and uh, they know why i am here and what uh, i can do so it was uh, really nice to to see that it's no pressure it was just uh, in my head <laughs> But uh, yeah, it's a uh, it's little bit different. And uh, I now, like after two months, I need to say that I really like it because it's a lot about details. And uh, yeah, I will just be positive about uh, this type. But of I have I have to say congratulations because I have played with many uh, very good back players in, in, in Barcelona and I have seen these players to struggle a lot during their first season in in a, in a new system and when i see you playing with ecast it looks like you have been playing there for a long time but believe me it was not like from the beginning so <laughs> okay <laughs> i wanted that it's a little bit faster but uh, of course there's still it's many things uh, to do and still we can uh, be better and we can perform better it's my opinion so i think uh, yeah still we can perform little bit higher i like your sentence uh, they see what i can do um and everybody saw what you can do last weekend uh, when you faced crim in the ehf champions league women and uh, there was uh, eight seconds left on the clock and uh, marketa yarabkova she took her heart in her hands and uh, threw the ball <laughs> onto the goal uh, scoring the decider in the very last second of the match and uh, the whole crowd escalated afterwards you included what went through your mind in that very second uh, in all the game i was uh, i don't want to be bad but i am honest with me that i was shit. 
especially in the in the attack. So I just uh, thanks for the YouTube ban. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> just take it, <laughs> but uh, yes, it is how it is. So, uh, uh, but still, it's this feeling that I know that I am not good at what I can expect from me, or like minimum the the level I was really under, and. Uh, it was still the feeling that I know that uh, I can feel that I am important for the team, and this is what why I am playing the handball and why I really like it. And in this team, it's uh, like something special that there is sixteen players, and all of them are using like uh, that. It's the most important player. So this is something that I really like. That Casper, uh, our coach, he trusts me, and uh, there was just my job to put the ball to the goal just doing my job here nothing special <laughs> just winning a game in the last second have you ever scored a, a buzzer beater before uh i don't i cannot think now like this but because i don't know when was the last last game that we won uh, that i won with the team like this because maybe it was a little bit yeah, against the air in Final Four, it was like up and down, but in the end was two or three goals, but uh, our end of the game was also not <laughs> not the best mm -hmm. one. Uh, but yeah, it's nice feeling. Uh, yeah, I uh, do believe that. Um, but now you guys uh, are having a little bit of Red Cross on your back because uh, it's 4-0 for Recast, the two other teams uh, with a 4-0 winning record. Uh, but asking you, as the the hunted team, maybe who is the team to beat for Ikas this season? <laughs> of course, we want to win all of the games, but some sometimes will come uh, also a little bit struggling uh, with some things. But uh, how I said, we are going game by game, so I will not think now uh, against who we can win or we can lost. I don't want to speak about lost. <laughs> so, but, uh... This is the political, the political answer, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you dribbled your way out of that. It's yeah. fine, it's fine. But <laughs> the answer has to be Ikest and, and Jür when they are the two of the top teams, you know, beating Vipers and Mets away, then Ikest are different. But I want to know, uh, Market, what are, you know, the goal for Ikest uh, in the Champions League? Because they haven't played it for a couple of years. I know they won European League last year, but... Uh, I know also you offer a great start, but have you talked about, okay, we were trying to make it to the final four and see what happens and what is the goal for the team this year? I think it's too early to speak uh, something about that and also for the club who is playing after a long time uh, Champions League. So uh, we are just speaking to play uh, playoffs. It's, it's like uh, first goals in the Champions League and uh, after that, especially after last year, everything is possible. That, uh, we <laughs> saw some interesting game that went through the final four. So uh, yeah, everything can happen. And I think that we are already shows after four games uh, in the Champions League that we can do a lot. Well, I feel like uh, we did talk a lot about Ikas and your your former teams, but I personally want to know a little more about you as a person. <laughs> uh, I want to know a little more about Marketa Yarabkova. Why did uh, little Marketa uh, end up choosing handball? <laughs> uh, I don't think that I'm like interesting or something. I'm quite a boring person, I think. <laughs> But uh, I was just thinking... <laughs> Having talked 20 minutes with you, I can totally disagree on that. <laughs> um, what I know from my mom, that uh, I was playing all the time with the ball and I was quite a uh, little bit crazy child, maybe, that uh, she just decided to give me some sport with the ball that I could not be home anymore <laughs> with her. So uh, <laughs> I just started to play, uh, start to play handball and uh, my brother is playing ice hockey and my dad was playing football. So we are just uh, speaking all the time about some sports. Of course, my parents, they know everything. <laughs> they are professional, <laughs> professional in all of the sports. So uh, 
yeah, it was just uh, choosing something with the ball and uh, volleyball. It's not so many contacts and uh, not so interesting in my in my eyes. So I'm happy that I chose handball. When did you realize, uh, oh, wow, what I'm doing here, that's actually quite good. And uh, I might end up being a pro one day. I don't know if I could realize, but uh, it was always, I always was thinking that uh, usually I, I am knowing what I am doing, you know? So when I went uh, for first my uh, foraging club to Hungary, it was really hard two years and uh, I still was not giving up, but there were some moments that uh, I said uh, I should be here or I should be home or what sh I should do. But in that moment, uh, I just uh, continue because I was sure that will come uh, something for what I am uh, for what I am waiting, and uh, it came. So my month was uh, all the time just uh, directly straight, and uh, I think it's really necessary to to be part of some hard uh, moments uh, or some hard years uh, to just after that be proud of the history what I what I was. Was the first move the toughest to go to Hungary? Mm, yes. Yes, it was uh, in when I was 17 and I uh, moved from uh, mom's uh, kitchen and uh, my room in uh, our home. It was uh, it was the it was maybe not so tough like uh, in Hungary, but uh, it was really similar. As you say that all the movements that you do in your career are building your character and uh, for me that I have played in my hometown uh, my whole life uh, I kind of envy you sometimes because uh, all this background that you have and all these people that you met during your uh, your journey uh, is exactly what you say it's building your character and uh, for you, uh, as a woman in a Czech in Czech Republic, uh, starting to play handball and now being the player that you are, uh, that's a quite of an interesting journey. So I don't think that you are a boring uh, person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it's just my opinion. So uh, I'm yeah, but, really happy but, for. But think about it, you but, know, it's, 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 it's a lot of yeah. things in your background that you, that, that it's a lot of stories that you can explain and a lot of things that you have lived uh, during your life in, 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 in sports. So I think it's quite interesting. Yeah, most yeah I was also thinking many times that uh, why we cannot have a handball on the level in our country, what is uh, in the other country, for example, in Denmark or something else or why I cannot play uh, handball in my own own city, how you already said. But uh, mm -hmm. after that, I am just glad and proud uh, that I should see so many countries and so many things and so many people and uh, not everyone is uh, so nice all the time. So uh, this is also really good experience uh, for the for the life. And I do feel like there are a lot of little kids uh, in the Czech Republic looking up uh, towards the national team uh, and uh, be like, oh, wow, Marketa Yurapkova, she's such a big role model for me. And I want to be like her uh, someday. That brings me to the next question. Uh, who is your role model uh, growing up and playing handball? Who did you look up to? I need to say that uh, it was always uh, my brother because uh, he is five years older and uh, he was all the time with me in the same room. And uh, when I see him, how uh, normal it's for him to go to the training and normal to go to the school and now have uh, free time. So I just see that for me need to be normal as well. So uh, for me it was uh, mostly just him that uh, I cannot say that I have uh, idol in uh, in no any singer or <laughs> athlete <laughs> or something of course I like to watch the sports but like basically not uh, directly to just uh, one person so I need to say my brother that is good and that is uh, well very heartwarming uh, in, in that point 
but uh, it did help you eventually to become one of the best in your sport right now. Um, and that is being proven by uh, some individual titles, just to name two of them, uh, finals MVP 2022, Bundesliga top scorer in uh, the season 2020-21. Um, what do those individual titles mean to you? Of course, it's nice. I cannot say that uh, <laughs> I don't want to do <laughs> to do that because, uh, of course, it's nice feeling. But uh, for me, it's it's good when these individual things will come and the team will help. So uh, when team will be successful, for me, it's uh, better that, uh, for example, there is like two, three more like individual awards maybe because uh, how it shows the uh, against Krim, maybe I just took like the winning point, but uh, I was 59 uh, minutes not in the game, how maybe the others go. So always is the collective team who is winning. So, uh, and it was also in the final four. And you will have a different collective team around you for the upcoming week. Uh, maybe that is uh, a good transition to uh, shift over to your family once again. It's international break. Uh, you're going home to play against Finland. Uh, the first match, I think it's on Wednesday. Uh, do you have time to see your family at all? Uh, yes, one day. So uh, I will <laughs> see family my family like uh, my boyfriend and uh, his daughter and my family side because we are living in the village and uh, it's actually a place where I was born my boyfriend and my family is 80 kilometers uh, far away and my brother now is playing in czech republic but he's in the other side so it's uh, 400 kilometers so it's a little bit far away but uh, i am happy that i can feel our home and i can see uh, our people from the family. It is just few hours, but uh, it's like one week. <laughs> yeah, totally. And especially uh, you moving around all the time. Uh, you gotta uh, enjoy each and every second that you get at home. Um, but uh, talking about that a little more sports-wise once again, uh, Finland at home and Portugal away. Uh, it's the Euro qualifier time. How do you see the chances for Czech Republic to qualify for the Euros 2024 after missing it in uh, 22? Yes, uh, we are always, I think, like uh, up and down and all the time some uh, new young players. Like, I don't want to say no name, but uh, still it's like a lot of job in front of them to be on the level there should be that uh, we want to do some good result also with national team so i think finland it's like <laughs> something nice to play against them because i don't know so much about uh, finland handball but soon i will know hopefully <laughs> <laughs> and uh, portugal can be <laughs> but portugal can be a really tough game because uh, they have quite a good player playing in the europe so uh, there will be the hardest game of course i don't want to forget about the uh, netherlands because everything is possible when before the match start but uh, they are on the, the d different level than we are yet do you always look forward to uh, meeting with the national team again uh, of course i really like uh, to be part of the national team not only that uh, i can go back home but I can see the girls from the same country. It's not that I don't like <laughs> my team, but it's uh, <laughs> something new. <laughs> it's Finally, something no new Scandinavians and... anymore. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> but finally, I can see uh, also our mentality and uh, to have a little bit changing uh, in the season. It's, I think, nice. The closest to the south of Europe and Mediterranean uh, weather, the better, you know. <laughs> <laughs> the better. I can, I can feel better, you. Yeah. I can. I can feel you, Marquera. I can feel you. Uh, but and yeah. I want to say the good thing about Denmark is that there are not 
that many long away trips when you're playing, Victor. It's amazing. Yes, it's amazing. <laughs> That's true. That's true. So, so better John yeah. Trevor than have nice weather. <laughs> you always need to bring an umbrella, though. But uh, well, <laughs> there's always something to complain about, I guess. Um, but then uh, let's have a look at not this euro but the uh, the euro afterwards uh, 2026 uh, there was a joint bid coming in from Poland and from the Czech Republic what would it mean to you as a player to be able to uh, well play in front of a home crowd uh, for a big tournament like the euros I think that all of the players who is playing for national team always loves to play uh, in uh, home country. So for me, it's uh, not different. But uh, of course, that uh, my opinion is it's hard job because uh, compare, for example, again Denmark and again Scandinavian, <laughs> it's uh, it's a little bit uh, different and uh, difficult to to make a similar like uh, they are because the people are knowing much more about handball than uh, in our country but uh, hopefully i hope that when it's chance to play there that uh, we will do the best for it in your wildest dreams what would you wish for that tournament uh for uh, to 2026 yeah a medal. It's for a medal. wildest, wildest dreams. Yeah, dare <laughs> yeah. to dream. Just <laughs> dare to rise and dare to dream. <laughs> it's two years more. Okay, so oh, yeah. we will be two years older. Then can take <laughs> more experience from the young players. <laughs> so uh, yeah, there can be more chances. Maybe that it's now, but uh, still, I like to stay on the ground and not uh, thinking so much about uh, about the the goal but uh, more about the way how we can go go there so it's more hard of course it's nice to to have some uh, some goals and some dreams but uh, i think that more focus can be for the way how to how to do it I think for uh, the Euros to come to the Czech Republic, uh, it needs a strong speaker, it needs a strong voice. So uh, this right here, right now, is uh, your spot to do a little advertising for the Czech Republic as a host country for the Euros 2026. But in this case, I'm worried. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's nice country. It's... Uh... There can be some talented uh, that we can uh, see maybe in the future, but how I said, it's uh, still a hard job. And uh, yeah, you can see something different than uh, all the time to play in Scandinavian or the country <laughs> where it's uh, famous for the handball. So you can see something, uh, something else as well. I have to say <laughs> that uh, I have to say in the <laughs> Austria. 2010 euro i played against the czech republic and we were quite close to the border and it was full of uh, czech republic fans and it was amazing atmosphere playing that game against uh, czech republic so i think that uh, all the czechs are going to 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 support uh, their country and their team and uh, hopefully at the atmosphere in the arenas which at the end of the day it's what we like to to see and to, to feel in a big championship like that, it's going to be crazy and amazing. Yeah, I, I need to say that the uh, last game at home in April against Switzerland, it was, uh, I think, the most people in uh, women's handball in Czech Republic when uh, we play in Brno, it's also close to Austria. And there were people and they were, uh, I need to say, really amazing. And uh, I didn't expect that it will be so nice atmosphere like this. So, yeah. We can do something special and uh, it can be maybe this uh, European Championship. That would be nice. That would be nice. Uh, I think if none of you guys have another question for Marketa, we stole enough of your time and... Uh, 
Well, uh, let's keep the fingers crossed for the Czech Republic and I would ask you to keep that winning streak on for Ecast because uh, it is a lot of fun to watch you guys play right now. So uh, keep that smile on your face, keep that energy on the pitch and uh, well, just fingers crossed for the rest of the season. Thank you for joining us, Marketa. Me as well, thank you very much. It was uh, really nice and uh, you spent my time just 15 minutes before, not uh, not after, so <laughs> it was <laughs> fine. <laughs> All right. Good, good luck. luck. Best of luck, yeah, yes, luck. yes. What a strong woman and even a stronger uh, handball player. Nice guest, I enjoy talking to her. It was really nice. Uh, it was uh, really nice to know I think it's it's really nice to what we do with our guests. It's not for advertisement, uh, our podcast, but I think it's really nice because we not only speak about Humble with them and how the season is going, that everybody's doing that, but uh, we also want to know a little more about them, you know, and the personal stories of the people is, is quite interesting. And, and, and I loved it. I loved it. Yeah, absolutely. And I personally feel like it's uh, super interesting uh, to hear all those stories about uh, when she moved to Hungary, when she moved over to uh, to Norway and uh, the move over to uh, to Ecast right now and what the goals are and stuff like that. And uh, well, she said she was a boring person, like one of the best handball <laughs> players in the world right now says about herself that she's a boring person. How? That doesn't get into my mind. Maybe she's just uh, hardworking. That would be another one because I noticed uh, whenever we ask her about the goals for for eCast in general, she, well, she was more willing to speak about how to get to a specific goal and be how can we train or work to get to, let's say, for example, the EHF Final Four. And uh, I think that shows also a mentality for a player that has actually already won the EHF Champions League. Uh, she's not thinking about uh, that's our goal, but it's actually more focused on how to get there, uh, how many of hours we need to put into the gym and, and the training field. And that shows uh, some character, as Victor said, and herself. But I think that the, the, the fact that we asked to one of the best players at this moment of the humble uh, country, you know, uh, the fact that we are asking her some questions and that uh, he is defining herself as a boring person, that mm, makes me feel that she is living all this process with a very, in a very natural way. She is just living her life. She's not looking outside. She doesn't, let's say, she doesn't care what people outside is thinking about her. She's just there to do her job. You know, and 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 this is what is actually giving her the success that she is having uh, in in Hamble. Yeah, totally. And she's really good at it. And she's <laughs> yeah. really, really good at it. <laughs> uh, yeah, I read out of that that she's a super humble person. So uh, that uh, she does recognize I just won the Champions League two freaking times in a row. And uh, now I'm going over to another team to help them win the next championship. Possibly, maybe, I don't know yet. But it is looking good at the minute. And uh, she does a superb job, uh, but is always... Uh, a little criticizing herself as well, uh, being like, yeah, well, 59 minutes, I uh, didn't get a foot into the door, uh, but then in the last second, it was all right. But still, the team is the uh, the thing that stands in, in the center of attention. And uh, I do like that mentality a lot. Tells me two things that uh, that the team in uh, Maqueta trust because they still want to give her the ball no matter how bad or good she fought she played herself and it also shows a character of a of a big player because uh, whenever the games needs to be decided decided then it's most often to be uh, you know I wouldn't say the best but the big players that are stepping up also in these kind of moments. Um, not to say, Victor, not to give you credit about your boss a beater against Ryan Nick also. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, the, the, the thing is, the, the thing is that uh, for a player like her, she she scored one goal, she missed two, so it was one out of three. Uh, a shooter like her, when she is not helping the team with what she's doing best, she can uh, still do some other things, you know, and and and. For a player like her, that she is living out of her goals because she is a goal machine, to be able and to be confident enough to shoot the last one uh, at this yeah. game and score it, 
this is uh, talking about uh, herself, you know, and 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 that's uh, that means that she's a, a amazing player. Yeah, most definitely. Uh, we did have one topic that I uh, wanted to ask you about as well, Victor, um, because uh, we did talk about uh, the possibility of playing a tournament at home. World Cup 2013, you just didn't play it at home, you won it at home. Uh, what does it mean for a handball player to be able to play in front of a home crowd? Oh man, that was uh, that was a crazy month, you know. Uh, I always say to people that I felt for one month as a football player in Spain. Uh, <laughs> yeah, because uh, because you know we were all around the media, and when we were uh, walking on the streets, uh, people was taking pictures with us, and uh, the the arenas uh, were full when when we had games. And uh, so we felt that the whole country was supporting us and that was amazing and ending up uh, beating uh, Denmark in this uh, final that it's gonna be it's gonna be in the memory of Spanish people and also in Danish people because I think it's the highest uh, difference in a world in a world championship final ever uh, <laughs> that was amazing that was amazing I'm reading a little bit of in your face, Martin, out of that. Yeah, well, it's fair to him to say it's facts. They did really well. And uh, I don't know if I recall it correctly. Maybe I'm totally wrong here. But uh, in goal, was it up at Stabik or was uh, told Like, to me, he's also, if no, he, he was one of the best, but if I recall correctly, he was also having a pretty okay game that day. But in general, Spain, when you win with that, huge amount of a goal then yeah it's the facts but luckily yeah. Denmark has been doing pretty okay after that yeah I have to be honest if we would count the the games that I lost and win against Denmark I lost more games than yeah. than I win against them so uh, but this final it was crazy uh, Arpad Estervik after 25 minutes in the first half she just shut the goal down and, uh, and he was saving all the balls the second half of Arpad was amazing and we, uh, yeah. it was crazy so uh, but but uh, the balance uh, against Denmark for me it's losing more than winning well I mean uh, quality over quantity isn't it <laughs> I love your point of view ben. <laughs> I like you I like you <laughs> I like you too man I like you too uh, but well uh, uh, talking about that time um, and I do feel like uh, the Czech Republic might be a good example as well because uh, as Marketa said uh, her brother and her father they were football players and ice hockey players um, those are the main two uh, sports in, in Czech Republic that might change when there's a tournament at home as well. Um, and then you would be surprised if someone comes up to you and be like, hey, well, can I get an autograph of you? Would you want to turn back the time and uh, be in that uh, minute of fame once again? Yes, of course. I think it was uh, it was very nice. It was very nice to feel what we all felt during that uh, January 2013 Uh but I think it's quite difficult to change the sports culture of a country. Uh, at least in Spain, we had several uh, good tournaments and we are two times world championship. We are two times European championships uh, and, and we have won several medals uh, in Olympic Games and in world and Euro championships. So still the culture in Spain, it's football, 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 football. And then it's a little more football, you know, so... <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if it's possible to change the culture of a country only for one championship. I think it's quite difficult. Yeah, probably. Well, I mean, uh, that's probably why you're becoming a better paddle player, eh? Just uh, <laughs> because uh, that. And is, after uh, football is coming paddle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> somewhere on spot twenty-three <laughs> after uh, twenty-two spots of football, uh, paddle is coming up there. Um, but yeah, I do like it that we have a little bit more time uh, this week to, to talk about stuff and talk with our guests and talk uh, about everything in life because there wasn't too much uh, handball action going on. But there was one topic that we actually need to talk about uh, because uh, I cited in a mutual agreement, uh, FTC parted ways with coach Martin Albertson, Martin Albertson 
that way. I speak with a potato in my mouth right now. Um, <laughs> Martin, what do you think? How mutual was that mutual agreement? Yeah, it's it's hard to sometimes, you know, read from the press release what's the really true of it. But it said that Martin Albertson, it was a wish from him and then it was a mutual agreement. But in the end, if Martin, he wanted to to leave the club after eight games, I think it's four in Champions League and four in the Hungarian League where they won all four games in the Hungarian League and it's not going oh, that quite well in the, in the Champions League, um, then it's probably a good solution for the club. Uh, it's quite similar to the situation that we maybe saw with Gil Gay also, but it's not that often that you see coaches leaving their club so early, but uh, Let's see how much it changes because there is another Danish coach taking over, Alan Heine, and uh, yeah, whether it was a mutual or not, uh, in the end, if it was a wish from the coach, and uh, and it's not, you know, he's not delivering what the club probably expected with having last season in mind, then it's, I wouldn't call it a win-win, but uh, it's it's great for him to move on and also for the club. And let's see in which direction FT, FTC are going from here. Well, and I mean, uh, in the end, we all don't know what happened behind the closed doors. And uh, maybe Martin Albertson, uh, he was, well educated enough to see uh, I'm not reaching the team and I'm not uh, uh, my methods of coaching they don't work from here onwards and I want the best for the club so uh, it might be best if we parted ways so uh, it's just uh, interesting to see because uh, as you said it in the league it's uh, working perfectly fine for FTC they uh, did have four matches being played um, and All of those four matches were won eventually, um, but still uh, he said, well, the focus is the biggest competition, the biggest club competition uh, in all of Europe, uh, if not in uh, the whole world. Um, and FTC it doesn't get a foot on the ground there. Uh, Victor, do you think it's the right step to, to change coaches? Uh, the future will tell us, you know, uh, and, and the next results of the team will tell us if it was a good move or not. But we spoke uh, in the last episode about FTC. And we all agreed that something was happening because, uh, uh, you know, in, 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 in the last game against uh, Rapid at home, uh, um, we all were guessing uh, what the, the result was going to be uh, in the last episode. And Uh, the team was leading at home uh, by five or six, if I don't remember wrong. And then something happened again, you know, that the, the, the players were not uh, with confident enough or I don't know, they were waiting for the time to stop. Or, I, I don't know. But uh, we all agreed that something was happening. And I think only uh, Martin or the players or the staff in the club Only they know what really happened. And if they decided to, to, to try another solution and go in another uh, direction, uh, let's see what the, 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 the future results are going to be. And let's see if this was or not a good move from, from FTC. Yeah, especially talking yeah. about that game. Um, it just, everything didn't seem to work out in the end. Uh, it was 19, 20 minutes left on the clock. And they were five or six goals up, but the balls just didn't want to go in anymore. Uh, post shots, saves, steals, uh, turnovers, easy throws uh, besides the goal. Um, it, there just seemed to be something wrong. It, it almost seemed cursed uh, in, in that point. Um, but yeah, I do feel like there, there is one reason why they didn't lose it, and uh, that's Blanca Biro. Because uh, she ended up saving a lot of balls in the in the past in the last 20 minutes, um, I did put it into the calculator. She went over 40 percent in the last 20 minutes, and that is some massive stats. Yes, uh, yes, that's uh, that's amazing from her, and I think that if the game uh, would have five more minutes or, or two more minutes, I think Rapid would win because the momentum was for them. And as you said, the last 15, 20 minutes of FTC, it's like the, the, the lights went down and, and, and they couldn't, I don't know, they couldn't play their, their game, you know. And uh, Blanca Viro, she, she is an international goalkeeper with a lot of experience. And I think that thanks to her, 
uh, they have uh, one point in the in the score now. Yeah, most definitely, most definitely. Um, I do think that we might need to speed it up right here because uh, one of us three has an appointment coming up, um, and uh, that is one guy who is about to go on travels as well. So Martin, where are you going? It's, it's Friday, five o'clock. It's the beer appointment, or what it is? <laughs> 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 it's actually my parents who invited me out to eat and my brother is coming from Copenhagen with his girlfriend and we are going out to eat and uh, maybe there will be room for a beer uh, but uh, it in might. general I actually find yeah might but in general the, it's an interesting talk you know with coaches because a new coach coming into a new club uh, how much time do they need is he under pressure how much do he want to implement how much do he want to change because uh, as a club they also probably needs to expect there will be some results or there will be a process or how you would call it a process is most often a, a cliche when people are talking about someone coming into a new club but it's a club that performed really well last season and now they're lacking the performance in the in Champions League but you also spoke about the game but sometimes it's also the difference about seeing a team playing with confidence and without confidence and you know they they had before that this game they had 26 games in three matches i think if i look at the shots they have 207 shots only 101 goal it's the lowest scoring percentage of all teams in the champions league and that's not what we expect from ftc but let's see what's changing but uh, it's correct i have an appointment at five and i'm looking forward to it <laughs> yeah the future will tell uh, uh but still you are uh, going on travels where are you going yeah, Monday we have, I'm flying to uh, Portugal to play a Champions Cup uh, on Porto Santo, uh, Madeira, um, which, are, which are all the national champions from uh, Europe playing against each other to become what, yeah, um, the champions of Champions Cup. Uh, there's EBT finals and then there's Champions Cup. But um, looking forward to it. It's nice. It's I, I think the weather in Portugal are better than here in Denmark. So uh, <laughs> I think so too. And I hope that the next week, Mart uh, Bengt, he can introduce you as the champion of the champions. <laughs> oh, that, that would, would be, be nice. Yeah, that, that would be good. Yeah. We need a little bit of Martin Vilstrup rowing action. Uh, I would uh, yeah. very much look forward to see that. Um, the final is getting played on Saturday, so we have to, you know, maybe time when uh, we're going to do uh -huh. the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, uh, we will see when we can arrange a, a recording spot, but uh, I am optimistic that we will find one. Um, until then, there is a little bit of handball action coming in. So uh, you are playing your competition and then we have uh, the Euro qualifiers for the women going on and next week the Machine Seeker EHF Champions League is back. Uh, some interesting matches over there as well. I'm uh, especially looking at Kiel versus Kielce. Um, that will be a rather tight and intense match. Um, but in the meantime, we are going to keep our fingers crossed for Marquetta, aren't we? We are, but there's also Barcelona Geogé coming up. That's also an interesting one that we have to look out for. And uh, yeah, we will know. We will know because uh, Barcelona are looking really strong. Geogé are playing better with the new coach, I have to say. But uh, yeah, let's see. Interesting matches. Always great to have uh, Champions League matches. And uh there are other great matches as Wiesler Plotsch playing against Magdeburg. But we can mention all the games. That's the great thing about Champions League. A lot of nice games coming in. Uh, I'm looking forward to all of the shite talking that is going to happen between uh, you, Martin, and you, Victor, because uh, of that uh, Danish-Spanish duel. Uh, but yeah, eventually, I'm very much looking forward to it. Me too. <laughs> right. Uh, all right. Uh, fingers crossed for you, Martin. The problem here is that it's played in October, but uh, we expect a high level, and let's see what's, what's. Yeah, let's see if I smile or if I'm a little bit sad in next week. We will figure it out. All right. Until then, uh, I'm keeping my fingers crossed for you. Thank you, boys, for the time. Shout out, big shout out to Marketa Jurabkova uh, for spending this time with us, for uh, having a nice chat, uh, for giving us some insights into her personal life. And uh, until then, uh, we will hear each other again next week when it's time to talk handball again. Ball across to Dylan Nahi. Double in flight. Oh, what a start. Ooh, uh, into the net. She does it again. Yes, I'm going to work on the champion.